Yes. That is so cool. What a great E5. What up, guys? It's your boy Matt from RamseyVoice.com, and I am here today to react, to analyze, to, you know, maybe even do a little bit of teaching. Uh, where was I? That's up to a C. <laughs> it's pretty early in the morning, so it's it sounds pretty bad. Pretty early in the morning. But if you're here, it means that you're ready for more reaction videos, which of course is my whole reason for being here so that you guys get the most out of this, so that you guys learn the same techniques that these singers are using to sound even better in your own voices. So I just could not be more excited to get started off with this today. On that note, just a quick thing, if you're new to my channel, make sure that you watch until the end of the video where I reveal one of my favorite segments, which is called Two Minute Tutorials, where I take two minutes and I try to explain a concept that the singer in the video that I'm reacting to is using, and I totally make it up on the fly. <laughs> so I try uh, my very best to condense a very complicated subject or technique in singing, and I try to break it down in two minutes. It's a good challenge for me, and hopefully you guys get something out of it, which is almost a perfect segue into one of my favorite segments on this show, which is high note, low note, where we're going to take a look at a very, very positive comment that somebody left on my channel and one very negative comment that someone left on my channel. And uh, we'll see uh, what we can learn from this. Well, our high note today is coming from Princess Tomato. I'm going to pronounce that Tomato rather than Tomato um, because it has an E in the end. It says, I just came across this video and I want to thank you for explaining the singing techniques that J.J. Lin used in his song. It has helped me appreciate his performance on a more profound level. I like this reaction over the videos that make superficial comments on how good or how amazing or how beautiful a performance is. Yours is very informative. I really enjoyed it and I look forward to more. Thank you so much for saying that, Precious. I really, really do try to make my videos the most informative and the most analytical out of all the Vocal Coach React series uh, because I want you guys to learn. The whole reason that I'm doing this is so that you guys learn a little bit more about singing and maybe can download some of the information that I have in my brain into your own brains. Mm. And since our singer today is Russian, I thought that I would just crawl through some of my uh, Dimash trolls and I would just pick out a, a little gem. Uh, I, I know that uh, Dimash is Kazakh and uh, Polina, who we're going to be reacting to today, is Russian. But uh, I picked something in Cyrillic, because why not? Uh, I cannot read any of this, but I bet Google Translate can. Okay, they said, you don't need to learn Dimash. You need to learn from Dimash. Look and learn what is given by God to Dimash. Know who doesn't about his range. Dimash sings not as he can, but as he wants. This is not given to everyone. Study. And I love this comment because it is so typical of my Dimash trolls. Uh, because they say stuff like this of like, hey, stop singing, like stop analyzing his technique. He, he is basically God. Uh, he is, you know, you just need to learn from him. And it's absolutely true. Anybody could learn uh, from watching Dimash. But, you know, my job is a vocal coach. And so I'm going to be uh, taking a look and analyzing and critiquing exactly what he's doing, things that he may be doing really, really well, and maybe some of the things that he's not doing so well. So this whole idea of that, uh, what is given by God, God to Dimash. I mean, this whole idea of being born with natural talent doesn't really exist. I mean, certainly some people are born with some level of natural talent that may make them a quicker study at singing than other people. But this whole idea of like, oh, he was just born singing like that. Dimash studied for years and years and years um, to become the singer that he is. So I just wanted to, to kind of point that out and say, hey, if you don't sound like Dimash right now, it doesn't mean that you're never going to be able to become a great singer. Nobody is born singing like that. You absolutely need to study. Just like he's saying, study. With that said, we're just going to jump straight into the reaction. This is Polina Gagarina singing Akuku. And I have no idea what language it's in, so let's just hope for the best. And remember, watch until the very end because we're going to break down one of the techniques that she uses. Mm 
So E minor. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, wow. She has a really cool look. I love that tiara that she's wearing. I love that breathy phonation at the bottom. Yes. Not a whole lot of chest voice just yet. She's just using that very breathy phonation. E3 is the lowest note on the bottom. Yes. There we go. That's the first note I've heard with a full chest voice up to a B3. Such a cool language. Such a cool language. That's up to a B4 that she's just repeating. Up to a C5. Up to a D. Sorry, E5. And I just love that beautiful mix that she's got going there. Just really strong. And look at that connection. Beautiful mixer. She sings that B4 so well. She's using a little bit of a lower larynx to sound like a little bit more authoritative. Maybe a little bit more operatic training in her background. I'm just making a guess. I have no idea. This breathy verse, this is super, super contemporary. This is not operatic sound at all. Look how she's pulling her tongue back there. So let's see. Right there. She's pulled her tongue back. I don't know if you can see it in my own voice, but you can definitely see it in hers. She's pulling her tongue back, which generally will result in a slightly duller sound, which is very interesting. There it is again. You can see how far her tongue back is. Versus. Yes. That is so cool. What a great E5. Beautiful. That's the first one that I've heard that belt right there that is like very, very contemporary. A little bit of a higher larynx right there. Ooh. <laughs> I love those endings, man. This was an amazing performance. Polina, you sound beautiful. And that is going to transition us beautifully into our segment, Two Minute Tutorial. So let's put two minutes on the clock. What I want to talk to you guys about today is tongue position and how it relates to singing. 
A lot of people think that the tongue is something that it's kind of like, you know, it's moving around in your mouth, but generally it kind of like stays in one place as you're singing. That's actually not true. The tongue moves around a ton when you guys are singing. In general, on vowels, the tongue is going to stay in one position. It might be in the back of the mouth. It might be more flat and towards the front of the mouth. But in general, on a specific vowel, if you're holding a vowel like she is singing, in this one right here, then you're actually gonna keep your tongue in one place. So what you need to know about the tongue position in singing, especially when singing vowels, is that generally the more back the tongue is, the darker the sound. I'm gonna just say an ah and pull my tongue back as I do it. Ah, I didn't change the pitch at all. All I'm doing is pulling my tongue back as I hold that note. But as you can hear, the more front that my tongue is, generally the brighter and the brassier the timbre. Now, generally speaking, you wanna keep your tongue slightly more front in touching the bottom front of your teeth. This is for people who are just getting started off with singing, people who may still be dealing with a uh, and stuff like that. Oftentimes, that break happens when you start to pull your tongue back or you try to reach for the note with your tongue. Instead, you want to keep your tongue position pretty steady, in which case, I recommend keeping your tongue touching those bottom front teeth at the gum line, just like you're saying, uh. Just go ahead and try that at home. Just say, us. Now try to keep that same feeling as you sing higher. So let's try it from here. Mm. Like, uh, uh, so my tongue didn't move, but you may have felt to go, uh, uh. Now Paulina is such a fantastic singer that she's actually using her tongue position and pulling it back slightly in order to create that little bit of more of an operatic sound then. versus ah! and the same thing is true exactly in what we were seeing here in the performance so if that's a stumbling block for you right now what i would recommend is just say the vowel that you're trying to say it in your speaking voice first memorize where the tongue position is and then sing it in the same way for instance if i say us and then i go us that's in the wrong place i want to go and that will make it sound bright and rich and nice and strong. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Paulina, you sound amazing. I can't wait to hear more stuff from you. This is awesome.